You see, being a male, my brothers, doesn't make you special. Being a male doesn't make you special. Because you were born that way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you male. And in fact, even that, you know, yesterday, you didn't even have to be born a male. Yesterday, you didn't even have to be born a male. You could go and get a surgery and become a male. Today, you don't even need the surgery. Today, you just have to think. You just have to feel that you're a male. And legally, the law will accept you and protect you and give you the rights as a male, regardless of what you are. Based on a thought, based on a feeling. So being male doesn't make you special, but to be a man, to be a rajal, there's no surgery for that, my brothers. There's no hormones for that. To be a rajal, that's not a feeling that you can claim in your heart and then all of a sudden you become a rajal. That's not how it works. To be a man, that's not something you can get tattooed on your arm. See, many of us, we like to, we like to look like we're tough. We like to present ourselves that wish. To be a rajal, that's not something you can get tattooed. To be a rajal, to be a man, you see, look, even in the Quran, Whenever something is of importance, whenever something is of high regards, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses Rijal, men. Whenever it's something general, it's something that is not overly important, Allah says, Dhakar, males. Distinguishing that there's a big gap between the two. And tonight, my brothers, I want to ask you and I, how will you stand in front of Allah as a Dhakar or as a Rijal? As a dhakar or as a rajal, which one? You see, who determines who is the rajal? Who? What is the criteria of being a man? Unfortunately, now our society is pushed by social media. It's pushed by media, movies, entertainment industry is now shaping societies. And unfortunately, even Muslims, practicing Muslims, have taken the traits of Jahiliyyah and tried to make it deen. So if I was to ask anyone here, brother, what makes a rajal? What makes a man? If we're honest tonight, if we're really honest tonight, in our society today where we live, there's a lot of honor and respect and glamour given to the one that knows how to fight. Have you noticed this? Anyone who knows how to physically handle himself, huh? anyone who knows how to throw a few punches, in our society this is admired, this is loved, this is considered an attribute of a rajal. That if you know how to fight, this is why now MMA is such a big thing in our community. Boxing is such a big thing in our community. Wrestling and all of these physical contact sports. Sports that the Prophet ﷺ clearly made haram because of, the, because of the striking of the face. But really deep down, we don't care about what the Prophet really thinks. We care about what the society think. And now if you don't know how to fight, then brother, you're not considered as a man. So we have this epidemic now. And trust me, this is not new. Muslims understand whatever sickness we're going through, it's not new. The Habib, the teacher, the master, he came to teach. He came to cure the society of all of its sicknesses. But unfortunately, we're made to believe that the Sunnah is 1400 years old. Brother, we're living in a different time, in a different place. La Wallah, it's the exact same diseases. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, please, please, I want you to leave this with me. The Prophet walks into the masjid one day, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yes? Walks into the masjid and finds the Sahaba wrestling. Halal or haram? Would the Sahaba do something haram in the masjid? A'udhu Billah, no. 
So clearly halal, they were wrestling in the masjid, wrestling, not the, not striking the face, wrestling in the masjid. So he sallallahu alayhi wasallam walks into the masjid and sees the gathering. You know, I, I just, I just, because I have a very strange way of thinking. Let me think out loud with you and Allahu Alam, I'm not saying this is sharah of the hadith. No, these are just my thoughts. You know, sometimes, sometimes you're doing something with your friend and it's funny between you and him. It's funny, but then someone walks in and all of a sudden it goes from funny to looking very foolish. Have you ever had that? You know, sometimes you're someone walks in halfway through the joke and doesn't see the joke and, and then you start oh yeah Allah what a jursa what an embarrassment so the sahaba this is this is how i'm thinking you know the sahaba they're wrestling in the masjid and then imagine imagine rasulullah walks in imagine imagine the honor the azza of the man walks into the masjid and sahaba are wrestling so Allah, me personally i can't help but think like you know now not the Prophet, a Sheikh walking, jealous, bro. Pull up, man. The Sheikh's here, bro. The Sheikh's here. You know, in high school, whenever we were doing something, the teacher was coming, we had a code word. Ija, Ija, Ija. It's in Arabic, as in he's coming, he's coming. Wallah, the principal knew what Ija meant, right? Because everyone says it. So imagine now the Sahaba, they're wrestling, and now the Prophet walks in. So you can imagine what happens to the companions. So they all. Wow, embarrassing. And then he asks, he says, what are you doing? Please, please. Didn't the prophet know what they're doing? Honestly, honestly, tell me something. Didn't he know what they were doing? He knew exactly what they were doing. But the hadith is not just for them. It's for every Muslim to the day of judgment. And I tell you, Islam is ancient. Habibi, Islam is contempt. Wallah, wallah, qasam. Sometimes I will read or hear a hadith or read a verse and it's like Allah said these words in 2019 March. That's how alive the Quran is. People tell me it's old. So he walks in, he sees them wrestling. He says, what are you doing? Ya Rasulullah, marra aman, let it go. <laughs> Khalas, he walked in, we've stopped wrestling, leave it. But he saw, he, because he's the doctor, he's the teacher, and he's there to cure the sicknesses of societies. So they said, Ya Rasulullah, we are, we're wrestling. Then he asks, why are you wrestling? Look at the salt now. Now the salt is straight to the wound. Imagine the Sahaba, yeah, Allah. who's going to explain why we're wrestling? Who? Who's going to explain why we're fooling around? So they said, Ya Rasulullah, we're wrestling to see who of us, who amongst us is the... Ah, who's the Rajal, brother? Has anything changed in 1400 years? Anything changed? La Allah, it's exactly the same. They're not doing anything haram. Rasulullah knows that, that, that they went. But he was worried about something far deeper. So what does he say? He said, the Rajal, the man amongst you is not the one that can physically put down the other. Any meathead can do that. That's not how we determine who the Rajal is. 